fellas. Yeah, Crazy Rudy's Movie Emporium. We are selling three all-time class. well, two all-time classics, one okay film, wrapped up into one neat little picture. We've got Indiana Jones and the Lost Cru Last Crusade. We got Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Unless we forget Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the... Wait, not that one. What was the last Indiana Jones picture? Fuck. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Not that one. King of the Last Crusade, Temple of Doom, and Raiders of the Goddamn Lost Ark. You can get it all for eleven ninety tonight. And when in doubt, go for the cock punch. There you go. We uh we caught a little a little video game, a movie based on a video game. Super Mario Brothers the <laughs> Grand Adventure. Oh, wait, no, we saw Resident Evil, Laura Titty Underground. <laughs> Resident Evil, Laura Titty Underground. We saw Lara. Actually, you know what's funny? Her name is spelled La Lara, but why did they pronounce it Lara? Laura? Lara, yeah. I we guess saw, that's the UK. We saw Lara Croft Tomb Raider. And uh, it was a whirlwind... It's a whirlwind, all right. <laughs> I wouldn't say of emotions. Um, oh, there was a whirlwind of emotions. It's right. <laughs> it's one of the only rare movies where it starts off bad, starts getting better, and then completely implodes upon itself. Yeah, I mean, it starts out really, really bad. Yeah, to the point where I was like, "Sweet it was Jesus, Marvel, what are we doing?" Marvel here? movies were embarrassed. How. Uh, <laughs> How bad this origin got started. Yeah, um, you, and you literally could have cut, like, the first, like, 10, 15, 20 minutes of the movie. That was, mo the majority of the movie was origin stuff. Um, yeah. not only that, they went super cheap. We're gonna, there's a couple spoilers. I guess they're not really spoilers, but we'll hold out anyways, because it's kind of goofy. We'll get into it later. They allude to, it was a lot like the newest, not the newest game, the uh, re... The reboot. Reboot I game. I think it, it was started 2013 out, was the reboot. Seriously? That long ago? Wow. It might have been 2013 or 2014. It chose to be very similar to that, but change it only slightly for most of it. Uh, well, I mean, I. Uh, it's been a while since I played the game, but... Well, I remember because I... It's one of those games where you have to do collect a bunch of shit and do all this and that. So I, you know, I yeah. played it a bunch. It felt to me like the game was more of an inspiration. Yeah. Like a lot of the look of Laura, you know, changing. But the story, from... though, the oh, except oh. for some small details, like in know. the game, she's traveling to the island because she's looking for it, and then this one, she's looking yeah. for her father. One more thing, her her Asian liaison. Yeah. Lou Dan. Daniel uh, Daniel Wu. Daniel Wu, but his character's name was Ru Dan? Ru Lan? Something like that. Anyways. She meets him in Japan, I want to say. My father's gone. He left taking your father to that island. He just took his boat and I never saw him again. Motherfucker, how you on the boat right now if you never saw him again and he took the fucking boat? <laughs> he took another boat, I guess. Yeah, and he just has another rust bucket that looks yeah. exactly the same, is named exactly the same. Yeah, it's convenient. Yeah. They um spend all this time on Origin, and then when they get to the action, they get to the Lost Temple, Hidden Island, Mystery World. Yeah. It, we'll hold off on that. We'll uh, get into more of our impressions <clears throat> for now. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I guess my basic impressions would be, uh, you know... Um, it's a pretty forgettable movie. It's uh, generic would be probably the best word. If you if you change the part that both made us laugh out loud, we'll save that for a little bit. If you change that and get a more competent director, this could have been a lot better movie. The scene oh, yeah. when she's first gets discovered by the tracker, if they don't cut 15 times for the four actions that they do while they're fighting... That yeah. would have been a really good scene. I was thinking of They Live the entire time. Like, mm. if you just, I don't know, coordinate a little better, maybe get a good MMA trainer or something. 
Yeah, uh, there's a lot of shaky cam with the fight scenes. Yeah. Um, it's it's a lot handheld, um, and that that doesn't really work uh, for the action scenes. And it it doesn't look like uh, the lead actress uh, Alicia Vikander, like she had a lot of training. Um, you know, she's supposed to be like really good with a bow and arrow, and the way she runs around with it is is kind of awkward. She's always mm. has it like it pulled. Well, that's the thing; she didn't really have it that often. Well, There's only maybe ten, fifteen minutes combined when she had the uh, bow and arrow. Yeah. Well, there there was a big scene that <laughs> you weren't <laughs> in the theater for mm. when she had the bow, but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's a missed opportunity for sure. You know, I, I did think... you see that, or am I crazy that you could actually see like see something in it? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of things that I did like in the movie. Yeah. Um, like I did like the production design when they're on the island. Um, it reminded me, for some reason, the design reminded me a lot of the last, the Assassin's Creed movie. I didn't even see it, and it, it just really reminded me of it. Yeah, this is this is way better than the Assassin's Creed movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I guess isn't saying a lot, but um, yeah, like I, I like I like the main villain in the movie. Walton Goggins, he's the best part of the movie. As soon as he um, showed up on screen, I was excited because, I mean, they yeah. kind of went overboard with the beating you to death with the he's the bad guy, but... But I like it because his first he's, scene was great. He's so fucking cold. Yeah. Like, he's just brutal because he's been on this island for um, seven years. Looking for a... Looking for... A relic of antiquity, look, Looking for say. a tomb, we'll say. And... Nicole. Yeah, and he's just, he's been so isolated, he hasn't had a lot of, um, you know, quality conversation. Because he's been, in, he's been, of course not, he's been surrounded by Asian slaves. Right. Come on, you can't have a, they can't even speak goddamn English. What are they, and what are they going to talk about, fucking fishing? Him. Yeah, so. Don't whip me so hard <laughs> next time, please. Yeah, he shot my dad the other day, dude. Maybe don't do that again. Yeah, they are Japanese because they say that the the I there's like what do they say six thousand desolate islands off of Japan that a lot of people haven't yeah. discovered or whatever. No, that are uninhabited. That are uninhabited, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, he's he's good in the movie. He's actually trying. Um, yeah, he was the best part. Oh yeah, he's great. And I like the goons. I like the way they have, you know their tactical equipment on and the flashlights on the tops yeah. of the thing and their weapons are cool the sound design of the gunshots sounds really good um and it was really violent like i'm surprised this movie's pg-13 well it was really violent but they would cut away oh, right when it I, happened that's what i i would totally disagree like, yeah. You see people get shot, and there's actually yeah, blood. yeah, 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 and, and especially when people get shot with any bows of the and the side, arrows. Any of the side characters, like, uh, do you remember the scene when they're all running around and he's shooting blindly at them, and he hits a bunch of the Asian slaves? Yeah, that's um, you see it'd be him, shoulder shots. Yeah, it'd be it'd be real quick. They just yeah. gotta get out, and then they fall down. Yeah. But I, I mean, I was shocked, especially there's people who get impaled, and you just oh, yeah. see it. Uh, there's people who just get completely crushed. The only time I really noticed when they cut away is if a character went for a headshot, and then they do cut away. Execution. Any yeah. executions. They any definitely any away. point blank kind of execution, um, they they couldn't show. But I I was shocked at the level of violence. Um, uh, there is quite a bit of CG, quite a bit of CG in the movie. And they try to hide it by doing most of the big set pieces at night. There's one on a ship. Yeah. Which was very reminiscent of a trailer for the video game. It was very reminiscent to a scene from the video game. Yeah, there, there's there's a cut scene in the game that, you know, is a shipwreck and she's jumping off the ship and everything. And it, it was a it was like the, one of the very first teaser trailers for the reboot of the game. And they they just kind of you know, completely take that scene. Yeah. Um, well, minus a few small details. Yeah. Like, um, like I said, it was just her and the Asian uh, boat driver, Daniel Wu. Yeah, and then he just, like, disappears for the last half of the movie. <laughs> Who becomes enslaved. He's an Asian right. man, so of course he becomes enslaved. Yeah. Gender role, <laughs> gender roles, race roles continue yeah. on the island. Race okay? roles, yeah. You gotta know your place. <laughs> they get the hell! You get shot, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
I uh, I didn't hate the movie. I really didn't. Well, it's, first, it's okay. I I didn't hated it by the end. I was so bored. Just because it was so cookie cutter, man. Yeah. What, um... I really, um... Uh, I really like these kind of style of movies. You know, like Indiana Jones. Where people are going out on an adventure. adventure. And we don't get a lot of those. And it yeah. bums me out. But you well, really got to do it right. It was Indiana fact. Jones without without the balls, man. And we'll get into that when we get into the spoiler section well, a little more. I mean, like I said, I go back to the violence. There's there's definitely there's violence. There's ball. I'm talking in the sense of story, in the sense of film, yeah. and charming. You know, Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones is so fucking charming. And that's uh, what I thought the they were trying characters. to go for with Daniel Wu, like. Kind of a swashbuckling since, since it's drunk a lady, guy. since a lady Indiana Jones will have Han Solo be her, her best friend for right. ten she's, minutes. She's the straight man, and he's kind of the bumbling. What of. about all the comedy in the movie was incredibly cringy? Yeah, it didn't work at all. Um, it you know. was for it's general audience comedy, is what I like to call it. Yeah, and there's people who chuckled at that, and it's. You know, it's it's test focused. It's like uh, this is what we're doing. All right, for we're uh, dipping. People are dipping at this moment. Give them yeah. a joke. And they were uh, they were rough. They were bad. Yeah, I mean, there is one person who is comic relief who I enjoyed because I was like, oh, I I just really like you. You're charismatic. Who? Oh. Uh, Nick Frost. From oh yeah, Shaun of the yeah. Dead. But he was He's in it for like two scenes. Two scenes that are like three minutes long. One of them is an after credits and during credits scene. Yeah, it's basically an after credits scene that's not. He's that's a, before the credits. He's a pawnman. Yeah, he works at Which, a pawn shop. <laughs> FYI, aren't guns illegal for citizens to own in the UK? Why are they selling them at that pawn shop? Well, it was in the back room. She he she wasn't supposed to see that. Oh okay. Yeah. Then why do they have it visible from the front room? Well, because his uh, his wife or significant other uh, opened the door by mistake and she wasn't supposed to see it. What a fucking idiotic... Well, no well they're, they're idiots. They're bumbling fucking buffoons. You Nick don't have I mean, Come on. Yeah, you, can't, you can't be too critical of that. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it does feel a little out of place. and um, Especially after at an end credit scene. Like, the movie's wrapped up. Her fu- her um, fate is sealed. That's not going to complete Her fate yet. is sealed, yeah. so to speak. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I guess we should talk about the opening of the movie with this... The reptile, the, uh, the fucking Tyrannosaurus picture. Uh, There's a picture of her and her father. She's super young and her mouth's wide open. She's doing Tyrannosaurus hands. It really right. amused me. And the boxing match. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> that was that was so bad. Yeah. So I mean this it starts off so bad. And so so what I would tell people is like if you can get through the first twenty minutes of the movie, you will have some enjoyment. You yeah. will, there will be enjoyment. You'll at least but the, be okay. The first twenty minutes is fucking rough and uh, What else happened? Okay, so first twenty minutes we get brief flashback. I thought the flashbacks were gonna go really hard. They yeah, were they brief. Sucked. They sucked though. They sucked, but they, they were, were brief. They got they got through them real quick. Flashback, she's... The boxing scene. And Why then... did we have to learn about her life as a courier? Why did they have to have a gay courier contest? Yeah, that... that... Like a goddamn 90s movie. It was like the goddamn uh, Power yeah. Rangers movie, yeah, man. Yeah, that, that, that was when I was really worried. I was like, okay, she's on a bike. And it's basically like a new version of dogs chasing a fox. Yeah. You know, she's got this, um, she's got like this foxtail on the back of her bike and it's got, uh, there's a paint can that's slowly leaking out paint and they all have to chase her and there's like this reward if they catch her and, and she it, gets a Did reward. she have to go until the paint ran out? Uh, yeah, they don't really make that clear. <laughs> yeah, she also got arrested because she got hit by a cop car on a bike. Yeah, which was... I didn't laugh at, but you were laughing hysterically at that. Well, just the paint. It's because first, bang, I see the cop car coming. I'm like, oh, come on. It's yes. so obvious. Yeah. They, they do a cutaway at first because she's thinking of her father because she thinks she sees her father on the side of the street. Yeah, that's right. That was gay. And basically, you see her looking at this guy on the street. And you're like, oh, okay, she's going to smash into this guy's door. Yeah. And she swerves away, for so it's a misdirection. 
And then right after the misdirection, she smashes into a car. And I'm like, oh, come on. She doesn't smash into a car. A cop car fucking hits her head on, man. And then yeah. she gets arrested for that. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. And she was covered in paint. I guess because she had paint and it was leaking and she was, I don't know, degrading public property or something. I thought about that too. It's probably I would hope they use would use water based paint, the foresight that you yeah, need. It was very uh, like extreme, uh, like neon green paint. But still, <laughs> why is that in the movie? What is it? That's that's what I would say. Is that why is the whole first twenty minutes in the movie? It, they don't. It give doesn't you build anything. her character. It doesn't say, oh, this all is kind of who she is. All we really learn about her is that her dad is presumed dead. After well, seven years. We get a flashback scene of her with a bow and arrow. Uh, so you're saying, oh, she knows how to shoot, you know, a uh, you know, bow and arrow. Which, yeah. You know, that, that that was ridiculous. And, um, you know, seeing her boxing and you're like, oh, okay, so she knows how to defend herself. To she was extent. fighting. She wasn't boxing. She was yeah. fighting. Yeah. I don't want to get um mixed martial arts. I don't want to get the those fighting guys on my case. <laughs> they um they can presumably fight. Yeah. But um yeah, the, the first 20 minutes is is awkward. They could have found a better way to set up her going to the island. Here's you know? here's what I feel like they should have done. They should have done a carbon copy of the game. If yeah. this is what they came up with. For sure. The um the jokes were bad. The act was. Did any of the actors? All the actors are pretty good. Um. Yeah, I didn't really have a problem. Uh, Daniel Wu was a little weird in some spots, but then he kind of evened out. He was, yeah, a little. And I like him. A little too hokey. He's on a really cool show on AMC called Into the Badlands. It's a martial arts show, um, and uh, I, I like him. You know, I like yeah. him as an actor, and so I was like, oh wow, I didn't know he was in this. Um, but he doesn't get a lot to do, and he doesn't really do yeah. any martial arts, which is he's like, this just, guy is so good at martial arts. He's the it's... boat driver, and then he's the... Yeah. Wait, we got a saver. Yeah. Um, she was good. Yeah, she, she's she's fine. She looks super small, though. You know what I mean? Well, she's not big. She never yeah. has been. Uh, she, she definitely looked fuller in Ex Machina. Which yeah. is what probably well, cause she, most people know her. Uh, thicker, you mean? Like a little yeah, chunkier, she had more, maybe? she had more meat on her bones, you know? Well, you, she's got to be athletic. She just looked yeah. She looked incredibly skinny, real yeah, thin. She's super... But they represented thin. it well in the fight scenes, even though they didn't film the fight scenes very well. No. There I, was always at least one moment where, like, she tries something, but she's yeah. fighting a man, and he easily overpowers her right. for a second. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the, throws her against the wall or something. Yeah, there is one fight scene that I did like quite a bit, and it is kind of a cliche fight scene. It's you know at night, it's raining, they're in the mud. But See, I, that was I'm, my biggest. That one was oh, my really? biggest problem. I I just I'm such a sucker for that type of fight scene. I, I fucking love. Fights it made in me the mud. so mad because I thought it was going to be great. They cut fucking oh, twenty yeah, five times. Very man. shaky, very cutty. Um, just f let me focus on what's happening. And for at least two or three of her actions, I'm like, wait, what did she just do? How is she? What's going on? Yeah, the, there's directors now that think that that's suspenseful by shaking the camera. There's a lot more jump scares in this. There is, I would have but I didn't really jump at any. I, I didn't like even jump. One, yeah, there was one that did kind of catch me off guard towards the end. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that that was a little off putting because uh, the movie doesn't need that. Um, it, that there was cheap. one. There was one where they're walking down an alley towards, walking down a hallway towards the end. They come upon a skeleton. We see it. Everybody sees it. They zoom in on it. Jump scare. Spiders crawl out. Digital yeah. spiders crawl out. Like we all see it. What's scary about that? Just yeah. in its logically in its face, it's got me questioning what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that didn't work for me at all either. That was. Um... It was like. Somebody, it was like Cheap. it was Cheap. in the mummy cheapness. That was yeah. what wrong mostly for this movie. For um, those who aren't in stress, interested in spoilers, would you recommend they see this? Oh man, you know, oh god, it, it, it's tough because I I really like this genre. I fucking love this genre. Adventure. I love adventure movies, and it's just, we're really missing this genre, and it kind of blows my mind, because 
usually when they come out, they're very successful. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if, if you're a huge fan of the video game and the franchise in general, you're going to go see it. You're yeah. just going to go see it. And, you know, so they're already going to go. But for most people, I, I think you could skip it. You know? Yeah. I think you could probably skip it. I would say... It's, a, it's more of a rental. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Um, if you have any desire to see it, wait till it comes to Redbox. Yeah. Um, if you have any real desire to see it, I don't get too excited. It wasn't. Yeah. It was like an Indian, all three Indiana Jones movies, but fucking not even in close to as good. With their balls cut off, man. Yeah. It's better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it's better than a lot of the young Indiana Jones movies. I never saw. Them. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, I mean, you could do a lot worse. <laughs> so we have a half recommendation, just about. And if you a like no the recommendation. game, if you like the game, yeah, go see it. So moving on, those be warned, ye be here. This is a spoiler section, so don't take it in the rear. <laughs> The biggest problem with this movie for me is it's she gets there, it's built up as a supernatural magic and all this yeah. stuff. All this, the it's like the uh, Ra not Raiders Lot, the Last Crusade. They tell you about the perils that they're about to embark upon: the kneeling before God, the right. walking over these somewhat sacred things, the invisible thing. They set them up here, but there's nothing. We'll have to deal with the pit of despair the pit of souls yeah all right let's just throw a ladder over all right we're gonna have to deal with a thou thousand army of handmaidens oh right. they're just skeletons they're corpses yeah when i saw them i'm like oh so they're gonna open up the casket the witch the queen is gonna come back to life and so is their fucking army and then all this crazy stuff's gonna happen mm -hmm. they open the sarcophagus nope she's dead she ain't coming back yeah. oh okay I guess no magic. Oh no, she's got a disease, but she was immune to it. Yeah, she and has, somehow, yeah. even though she's in a sarcophagus for untold amount of years, it's like bubonic plague. Yeah, she has. yeah, her disease survives. Bubonic plague, but in, the effects take hold in seconds, and then you become a zombie. Yeah, which uh, I actually really liked the transformation because it, it reminded me of. Um, you know, the face melting scene in, yeah. and uh, Ark, you know the Ark of the Covenant and yeah. the Raiders. But Remind me of you... Twenty Eight Days Later, the after. Yeah, but the way the face just like degrades and it's like melting and everything, and, I thought and that the was veins cool. were popping. I like, thought it was alright, and it doesn't it cut cool. away from that. You just see this guy like melting and getting all fucked up, and that was great. I was like, oh, this is cool. But like this is what fun. do you what do you think about the whole buildup of magic and peril, and then oh. Well, I I wasn't sure if they were going to go in a supernatural direction. Well, that was that well, that was what the whole the game the end of the game. Well, this you don't know until the very the end of the, the game. When yeah, the but, fucking giant like rock dude well, samurai starts moving around. And also, shit. the um in the game like you're fighting these giant oni demons. Yeah, they're the, they're running around the whole time. Yeah, the, you at least the see them. Demons, yeah. I would have liked this a lot more if they brought it in that direction. Well, the original movie uh, with Angelina Jolie has that rock monster. Yeah, thing. but that was um, very campy, very cheesy. Yeah, they. I'd like to see it. You know, maybe play it a little more straighter. You know. Yeah. Um, I I wasn't sure if they were going to go in a supernatural direction. They do build it up, and I do think that build up is cool. Like when you see all the um. She's breathing. Uh, when you see like uh, what, what the papyrus or whatever kind of a thing, the Japanese stuff that has all the drawings on it of the evil witch woman, yeah, that all that stuff looks really cool, and the build up for that is very ominous, and I like that, yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't really. Uh, it would have been cool if it went supernatural. I think they were scared to do that. I think that they were cheap, man. Like they, why oh, even yeah, bring it up if you're not going to do it? You know. Do yeah. we, could you guys, video box. game companies, could you license your games for cheaper? <laughs> I mean, if you want to make better films, they right. got to be able to pay for them, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't hate the misdirection. You know, that I think that is kind of interesting that she did have this, you know, plague, and that's why there's all these bones that are diseased and have the plague on it. Yeah. I think that's probably the best 
thing they could have come up with without going supernatural to make to have that make sense. Yeah. Uh, so that didn't really bother me. I, I actually I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but you know, if they did go full supernatural and you had all this weird shit with their budget, it probably would have looked maybe even more hokey. Well, maybe just at the end, just when they open the casket. Queen comes alive, army of the handmaidens attack. You guys got to get out of there before the fucking thing explodes or right. whatever. Plant the bomb and run out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually it bummed me out that they weren't in the tomb longer. That there wasn't like this huge exploration through all of these. Yeah, it was. It was, it was all just like a big hallway, yeah. a bunch of hall connected. It, it looked hallways. like a small set, yeah. like you were saying with a cheap. I don't know what the budget for this was, but. Uh, I wanted more time in the tomb. You know, cut out all that stupid shit at the beginning. Get, let's get more time in the fucking tomb. Now let's let's get down to the real nitty gritty. After one day on the island of Yamatai, in search of Himiko, she discovers a certain man whose name I'll never forget. <laughs> McNulty. McNulty. Yeah. Detective McNulty is on the island. She discovers him after one day being on the island. Not only that, when she sees him. He thinks she's a hallucination for about five minutes. Well, it's really annoying. When, when you were talking about the supernatural, when she first sees him, you, you don't really know if it's a guy. You think it's like this woman, like this almost like ghost. In the yeah, that's jungle. what I was thinking. And it was, was going like, to be whoa, like, this um, is cool. The it'd be like an Oni character. The one like from the game, yeah. like a giant Oni the, demon or the something. The lighting was really cool. And I was like, oh, wow, what is this? Like this witch woman, this like spirit. This potential, man. And then all of a sudden you see Dominic West, her dad. And you're like, oh my god, he looks like a bad version of Tom Hanks and Castaway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Not only like... that, but it's just like for real. <laughs> and he's so wide-eyed, and it and it's it's disappointing because it like I bringing up the misdirect. Uh, the main villain says he just killed him. He killed yeah. her dad instantaneously, and it's so badass when he says that. He yeah. just says it's so fucking cold-blooded. You know, and then he apologizes her to her after. Yeah. And uh, so... He was very... That scene is the best scene oh, in this movie. He, when he first meets her. The line delivery of that dialogue is fucking great. Man. Are you an Asian slave on the island? <laughs> the Rhine delivery. <laughs> the Rhine. Uh, yeah, he was... The, Walton Goggins needs to be in more movies. Yeah. And I like that he didn't do an accent. He just did his voice. And... Yeah. He's he's so fucking good. Chilling, man. Yeah. Chilling. Yeah, I, I love him. He's great on the shield. It's so... Yeah. It's so fucking... Why is it so easy for actors to be bad guys? I feel like, um... Well, he, you know, he's a character actor. So that's kind of the roles he's got to get. <clears throat> and, um, you know, he's... He's just, uh... And a lot of times, the villains are the ones that get the best dialogue. Yeah. In a lot of cases. You Would know? you say that he got the best dialogue in oh, this yeah, picture? For it's sure. at least the, any nothing memorable. The only thing that was would be him. Yeah. His dialogue, what he was talking about. Yeah, he's a good villain. I don't like the way the final fight scene goes. The the resolution of him. I could see it. Uh, I could see it happening. She shoved It wasn't very right. epic. He yeah. took he just needed a finger cuz he needed the disease or something so he could go home. And he has good motivation. You know, he wants to go back to his daughters. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't want to fucking be there anymore. You know, he's a soldier. He uh, just... Working for this company. Yeah. You know, he just... He's God, like, oh. that fucking ending. But anyways, yeah. he um, just takes a finger. They're fighting, going back and forth for a good two, three minutes. Yeah. And then explosion happens. He gets distracted for a second. She kicks him. And then she grabs the finger from his pocket and shoves it in his mouth before saying a bad quip. Yeah. Don't remember what it was. I'm sorry. Don't mess with the Croft. <laughs> Don't mess with the Croft family. You mess with the wrong family. One of, one of, one of those Something ones. like that. Yeah, you're right. And uh, But the, she, she, the finger's in a bag, so she doesn't get the disease. And, and she shoves it uh, in the guy's... I could see it coming. I'm like, she's <laughs> oh, yeah, about to shove it. Sure. She reaches for it. I'm like, oh, come on. Well, I knew he was getting kicked into all those diseases. Well, yeah, problems. that's obvious. That is totally fucking obvious. And it's just a bummer that that was the way they choreographed the ending fight scene. It's like, you couldn't have come up with something better than that. A little more exciting. Yeah, that that was kind of lame. Uh, there are quite a few bit of cliches. Um, yeah. You know, going back to that fight scene in the mud when 
she's reaching over the guy's choking her and she grabs a rock and hits him like that happens in every fucking yeah. scene in the mud um i feel like it happened in the game i can't remember yeah. There's definitely the first Jack fight. Reacher. <laughs> like every action movie. <laughs> I mean, still have know. yet to see either Jack Reacher movies yeah. just for that reason. The first one is the only one that I even bother with. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm not really a big fan of Tom Cruise anymore. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. It's, uh. The movie actually goes on for too long, even towards the end. Like, it should the, end that at was, the island. With that the, was the most... And then it keeps going. It's, it's like, they. Sh it turns out that the lady who was running her father's company... Which is like might have been, Yeah, it was either her aunt or her stepmother, yeah. right? Well, some she says guardian, I think, at the beginning. So yeah. she's some... They're connected in some way. Yeah, Kristen yeah. Scott Thomas, who's a very talented actress who's getting a paycheck here for, like, three scenes. Yes. And they're setting her up as the villain for the next movie. Their sequel. But baby. the thing is, they don't set up. They don't show you any of that till the end. It's just right at the end. Yeah. Wait. I, as soon as she opened the ledger, I'm like, oh come on. Why are you get? Why are we looking over the list of their uh, investments? Right. Oh wait. Her father owned the company. Why would he's her father own the company if he was on the island and the company was trying to kill him? Oh wait. This lady who we've known for. 60 seconds she's the bad guy yeah she's the ultimate bad guy she's the one behind who may have all. may or may not have been in the live action adaptation of 101 dalmatians i've yet to confirm I think this close was the crowd phil she may have been the wife oh to jeff daniels oh okay yeah um it was really awkward um and it does that thing that we didn't like in red sparrow towards the end where you're seeing flashbacks of the, the oh aunt, yeah, they're reminded. Yeah, or she did this, she did that. She's got the ledger. You see the the paper, like of the picture, and it's, everything. And like, it's oh, so oh, if oh, it's oh. so dumb that you have to re remind the audience step by step, like step by step, you. what it was, yeah. then cut it. And if you can remember it, keep it in. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, not terribly well edited. Um, and that that is you know like really said, beginning and ending. Awkward. See that was the that was together. that was probably the biggest demise for me. Aside, I don't know because you could have done the that angle where it's not magic, but the editing was the biggest undoing of this film. Yeah, just really strange cuts, really um, too much awkward transitions, cam. too much shaky cam. Yeah, and like I said, you know it it. It begins, you know, not well. You know, it's yeah. got a rough beginning, and the the ending is rough. It feels very tacked on. It feels like a deleted scene, you know? Yeah. It's sequel baiting, but it feels like an end credit scene. But it's it's before the credits. It's it, And that's, you know... They, they, they want a franchise here. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's about sequels and franchising, so... It felt like a lot like a Marvel movie to me, just... A Marvel superhero movie, um... Just way more violent. <laughs> origin, super awkward origin for most of the movie, then, with mixed with bad jokes all throughout, and fucking... A not really too exciting climax. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I'm uh, just, I'm really pissed, I'm not pissed, but I'm just, I was kind of getting into it. I was, I was Even with the father movie. thing. Yeah. I wasn't getting into it. I read it was bad, so I'm like, all right, yeah, see, whatever, another bad that. movie, I'll just, you know, I'll watch it, whatever. Yeah. It started off bad, then started getting a little good. I'm like, okay, we're on the island, when she first goes on the boat and they first go to the island, it's very effective. Then it's, as soon as she meets her father, then it goes down again, then you're like, all right, her father's here, I can get into it again, yeah. and then... No magic, no supernatural, nothing. Yeah, and there's there's another set piece when she escapes the camp, and she's on this plane on the water, which feels like something straight from the video game. She grabs a fucking parachute. Yeah. And she doesn't even put the parachute on. She's just holding. She's just the parachute. holding it. I was about to say, I was forgot about out. that. Like, this would rip your fucking arms off. You wouldn't be able to hold on to it. That or just <laughs> fucking fly out of your hands and she'd descend. Yeah. That that almost felt like a reshoot. Why didn't she just try crawling to the other side of the plane? Or because something. you gotta have a flashy scene. <laughs> I mean, at least I liked the thing I liked about that part was it was exciting. It was break. It was breakneck. All right, she's in a river. River's going. All right, now she's saved by a plane. Plane's falling. All right, 
Now she's in the plane. It stopped, but she's going to fall out of this. You know, I like that. I like that aspect it, it, of it. it. That scene felt, kept you on your toes. Yeah, I didn't really like the scene because I've I've played better scenes in the game where there's a specific set piece where she's like running on the buildings and they're collapsing. Yeah. And even in the Uncharted games, there's similar, you know, specific. I set was pieces. thinking about Uncharted and the Tomb Raider game and Indiana Jones all throughout this goddamn oh, yeah. thing. Especially when she's on the boat and she's climbing across the bars. I don't remember know, if that was hit. specifically in the game. It could have been. It felt like something like straight out of Uncharted and, and the game, you know, of climbing section. Um, so, you know. I mean, if you like video games, you're you're better off playing the game. <laughs> Why aren't there any? Are there any good video game movies you can think of? I mean, I'll I, take uh, even loosely related. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean the Silent Hill movie is okay. Yeah, it's a pretty effective. It has, movie. yeah, it has. I really love the atmosphere of that um, one. You know, the first I, one. Yeah, I I do have a soft spot for some. Of the, you know, like Mortal Kombat, it's not good, but I do have a soft spot for it. I remember because you got the VHS right when it came oh, yeah. out. Fuck Absolutely. yeah! And, um, These are five hundred dollars shades, asshole. <laughs> and even what? and even the Super Mario Brothers movie, I really I didn't that. see it until I was like fourteen or fifteen yeah. on TNT at it's, two in the morning. It's so batshit insane. So, you know, there's there's not a lot of you know good ones. It's and this. I always get excited for something like this because I'm like, is this the time where we finally get one that's pretty good? This yeah. could have been good if it just had some yeah. more cash to get a better director, to get some, yeah. you know, maybe some more exciting shit. All very humdrum yeah. at the end of the day. I mean, they Except for Walton Goggins. Yeah, they definitely needed to plan out better set pieces. You know, they could have storyboarded better and had some, you know, set pieces that, you know... Better coordination people. overall. The fight scenes, the set pieces. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, like I say, <laughs> I, do, I do like a lot of the imagery. Um, you know, like that fight scene in the mud. I, I like when they go into the tomb and there's the booby traps. And this one guy's, like, freaking out. And he's like, oh, man, don't freak out. And then a fucking spike just shoots right up and yeah. fucking impales him. I loved that. A delay spike? Yeah, I was like, fuck yeah. I love that shit. What about the Goonies <laughs> style puzzle where the floor is falling? Um, at first I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this. And then I was like, it oh, went this on is... for too long, huh? Yeah, where they're throwing all these gems. And it's Come like, on, it, you know. it would have been better if we knew what she was, what she was trying to do to solve the puzzle. It was just like yeah. a uh, poem or something, yeah. you know, a riddle. A riddle, one would call that. Yeah, there, there's, and there's another puzzle for opening the, uh, the, the main entrance to the tomb, which, you know, it, it does look kind of cool. Like all of the, uh, the pieces to the wall yeah. and even that piece that she finds that, uh, they give to her at the company, that Japanese, like almost Rubik's cube thing. I immediately thought, yeah. Oh my God, are we going to Hellraiser town? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That looks really cool. What so is the, your pleasure, Lara? Right. The uh, the production design of like the little gadgets that she has at her dad's left. Yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, they're cool the way they turn. But around they only and had they only had two of them. Yeah, I know. They yeah. kept just reusing them. Yeah. That yeah, there's not a lot of the puzzles. That that's I mean, like we said, they waste too much time at the beginning when we should just get right into it. Let's get right fucking into the island. Where you would know? you have started this movie? <sighs> I would have started Honestly, on the Japanese dock. Yeah. At the at the earliest. Yeah, you could have started at the dock right at night, you know, with, you know, her, like, you know, going and... They really reminded me of her character. the James, Daniel Craig James Bond when those Asian guys tried to rob her. Yeah, well, that that was bad. Like, I, that was the first moment when I laughed out loud when the guy pulls out the butterfly knife in broad daylight with all these people yeah, at the fucking Yeah, right bank. in the middle of a dock. He's like, now I'm going to cut you. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is hilarious. Okay. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that was that was bad. And that also felt like a reshoot. I feel like there's a lot of scenes from this movie that were reshoots. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I kind of got that vibe. There were some sort of strange, strange transitions. And transitions not meaning like, you know, the cuts or the fades or whatever. I mean transition like all together. Weird scenes. Yeah. Incongruiness. Yeah. Incongruity, I believe, is the word for that. 
I can't say though, I ain't no learned man. I once I once got kicked in the head by a mule. I went upside the I, I went inside the house, I hit him upside the head with it. We ain't too well educated, eh? I love I really like that movie. Billy Bob Thornton. How come he's not in more stuff? Alright, how about this? <laughs> he could have been the villain. <laughs> he would have been good too, but he would have been good too, but Goggins, Long Goggins was, great, was yeah. very um Yeah, he was fucking great. I'm sorry I haven't I haven't welcomed a guest in some time. My manners have gone. I don't know why I gave him a southern accent. Yeah, that, that, that first scene when she's in the bed and he's just sitting there fucking, you know, staring at her and they're starting to have the dialogue and she doesn't know what's going on. I'd love to, I yeah, really would love to see more. There, You know, I want to know the super villain team up of the century. We, Hollywood, give me money to make this. We have a crime heist movie. Michael Shannon, Walton Goggins, and who's our third heist man? Black guy? Give me a good, uh, bad black guy. <laughs> bad black guy. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of a black guy who plays a good villain. It's tough, right? Yeah, they're, they're there. I, I'm having trouble thinking of one. You go really cheesy with Morgan Freeman, <laughs> and he, he's just too old. I mean, maybe Lawrence Fishburne, young Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, yeah not super overweight Lawrence Fishburne. No, Sometimes yeah. it's hard to tell if he's jacked or he's just a big dude. Yeah, he's, no, he's just a fat he's dude. He's so out of shape now. It's awful. He looks terrible. But yeah, and then when he was in his prime, yeah, he'd be fucking great. Why don't you um, give us a rating on Tomb Raider? Close out Tomb Raider for those fine folks out there. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is generic. Uh, it's, it really is. It's, it's not really doing anything new or special. It didn't necessarily have to, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go with a five. I feel like it's average. You know, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed some things, you know, it, yeah. I, I would like, I, I would rent this or, you know, if, you know, say, like we always say on Netflix, it's worth a watch. Yeah. Um, if you can get past those first 20 minutes, you know, you're in for some fun. See, your five is much different from mine. My, me, it was somewhat entertaining, but it was really boring other than that, or unremarkable other than that. I'd give that a six. This, I'd give a, let's say, I would have given it a five before the no magic stuff. It's a four with the really build up for it and then nothing. So you liked uh, Red Sparrow more than us? <clears throat> <laughs> I got to see some awkward sex scenes featuring Jennifer Lawrence, so sure. Yeah. What did I give Red Sparrow? Five. Five. Yeah. I wish I'd given it a lower one now. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Why is Joel Edgerton and everything? Four. <laughs> um, if you really feel like seeing it, just wait and rent it. Yeah. No reason to see it in the theater. The sound, some of the times, a few of the times I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, the, the sound design's kind of good, but then... Yeah, on the gunshot. It would only be... Good. It'd only be for select scenes where, like, something's happening. Other than that, it was just... Silence until somebody talked, just about. Yeah. Forgettable. Alright. Go suck a dick, motherfuckers. Come back and join us for the next time. Thanks, guys. You're the best. <laughs>